He is good. He is good. He is good. Give another round of applause for our choir. Little in number, but mighty in stature. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 If you would stand with me, those who are physically able to stand as we go into God's word. And our word today will be coming from the Old Testament, Leviticus chapter 10. Leviticus chapter 10. That's towards the beginning of your Bible, before Exodus and Numbers. When you have it, say amen. If you need a minute, say I need a minute. Scripture, we have a mantra that we do before every preaching moment. If you would, raise your Bibles above your head and repeat after me. Living water, living water, living water, living water. fill us, us. till we thirst no more. And the scripture reads, and I'm going to be reading out of the NIV uh, version of scripture. It reads, Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu took their censers, put fire in them, and added incense. And they offered unauthor unauthorized fire before the Lord, contrary to his command. So fire came out of the presence of the Lord and consumed them, and they died before the Lord. Moses said to Aaron, this is what the Lord spoke of when he said, among those who approach me, I will be proved holy in the sight of all people, and I will be honored Hallelujah. and remain silent. Moses summoned Mishael and El Elzaphan, sons of Aaron and uncle Eziel, and said to them, come here. Carry your cousins outside the camp, away from the front of the sanctuary. So they came and carried them, still in their tunics, outside the camp, as Moses ordered. May you have been blessed by the hearing and the reading of the word of God. And for a subject title this morning, I would like to say, Unauthorized Fire. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, before we even get into our preaching moment this morning. I stand uh, very convicted with fear and trembling because of the word of God. Yeah. When you start really reading into who God is and his position and sovereignty, it will make you have a different reverence. And I believe in the, in the body of Christ and as in the world at large, we have lost a reverence of who God is. Amen. He is God and you are not. So before we go into that, we'll, we, we're we going to put that precedence down now. Um, Eternal Father, I thank you, O God. I thank you for this opportunity to handle your sacred oracles. Without you, God, I can do nothing. I am a mere mortal. I am weak. I am frail in every aspect. So, Lord, I pray that you would hide me behind Calvary's rugged cross. Lord, I pray today that our worship would be a sweet-smelling aroma to your nostrils, O God that it would not be strange fire, that it would be acceptable and holy in your sight, O oh God, for what you have commanded. In Jesus' name I pray. Yes. Amen. In Romans 15 and 4, it tells us, for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the endurance 
taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. In Leviticus chapter 10, we have a lesson about the worship of God. As we look at the account of Nadab and Abihu, we will see that in the worship of God, there is a proper way and a wrong way to worship God. Every Sunday, congregations all over the world gather together and worship the one true and living God. And we believe he has saved us from death of sin and moved us into a position of holiness. God is the one who has saved us through the death, burial, and resurrection of his son, Jesus. Jesus Christ is the perfect atoning sacrifice for our sins. He is perfect. And without him, we would never be able to come before the Father in heaven to worship him. We are filthy rags in his sight outside of Christ. In Hebrews 4, verses 14 through 16, it says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet did not sin. Let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Because of what Christ has done, we have been saved into order to worship our God. We have been saved to worship our God. In other words, you were born to worship. When we think about salvation and what God has really done and understand that he has saved us to worship him, we must understand that he is not just the author of salvation, but he is the author of worship and how to worship him. In other words, we have to worship God on his terms, not the way that we choose to worship him. As Buddha and Abel, there is a way to come before the Father. Pastor Ware touched on it last week. We must worship him in spirit yes. and in truth. See, we, we've, we've come to a point in this, in this culture that we live in that we have this mosh pods of religious uh, combined things that is not of God for one and that God requires more respect than what we give him. He created all. I am a creation. He is the creator. So how can I dictate to the creator how I should worship him? He is holy. And we have to take that in this context of what holiness is. But of what Christ has done, we have been saved to worship God. Salvation and what God has really done for us, we have to really, really understand it. And when we understand it, we understand that worship is a privilege. It's a privilege. See, the privilege of Nadab and Abihu, they, they were called, meaning they were called to serve God. In Exodus 28 and 1, it says, Now take Aaron, your brother, speaking of Moses speaking, now take Aaron, your brother, and his sons with him from among the children of Israel, 
that we that they may minister to me as priest. And Aaron's sons, Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ethamar. The Old Testament priests were chosen by God, not self-appointed. See, we have a lot of self-appointed people in the world as far as ministry, but at that time, God did the picking. And, 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 and we got to think of what Jesus has really done. When he done, what he did, he made us all priests. By, by, by God, not self-appointed, and that they were chosen for a purpose to serve God with their lives by offering sacrifices. In 1 Peter 2 and 9, it says this, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Where did we live previously? In darkness. So we owe God everything with our worship. We have no other means to, to, to lift him up but through our prayer and our worship. And people get laxed in prayer and worship and wonder why they're not seeing the manifestations of blessings in their life because they treat God like he's a stepchild. He is the master. He is the author and the finisher and perfecter of your faith. So we have to understand that as well. Presenting ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him. Stop creating strange fire. Mm. The Bible teaches us that God has granted a gift to each and every believer. With what? With, with, in, in which to serve him, his church, and those who God has placed in our lives as believers, our calling is universal to all believers. It's to serve as priests to the Most High God. Yes. In Revelations 1 and 6, it says, To him who loves us and freed us from our sins right. by his blood and has made us to be a kingdom of priests to serve his God and Father to him be glory and honor and power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. They were privileged to have a direct communion with God. In Exodus 24 verse uh, 1 and verses 9 and 11. He told them to come up to the Lord. And Aaron and Nade, Nade, Nadab and Abihu and the 70 elders of Israel which he told to worship him from a distance because it was a, a holy place and he had only summoned Aaron, uh, Nadab and Abihu to come up to him. And when, they, and when they came up to him, they, they saw the God of Israel. And there was under him sapphire and, and stone as it were a body of heaven and his, 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 clear, his clarity and his clearness. And, and upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. He also, we, they also saw God and they did not eat nor drink. Nadab and Abihu saw God and lived to tell of it. They lived to tell of it. Anybody who has seen God out of the body in the presence of the Lord, that means you're not living. So what a privilege to see the Holy One and be summoned by him to be called to the office of priests to serve and to worship him. It's a true honor. It is a privilege. Hebrews 4 and 16. Let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence. Find grace to help us in our time and trouble. That's how you can find it. If we had proper worship, you, can, you don't feel inadequate 
and approaching, approaching God in prayer. Right. Most people's prayer life is fragmented and they don't feel bold as mine it's because there's sin that resonates in your life so you don't feel that you're worthy to come with confidence to God to ask for help and mercy. Amen. And you wonder why you don't get help and mercy. Yes. Listen, get the dirt devil or Hoover or Eureka of your life and clean it up. Stop pump faking yourselves because he requires something deeper than we're willing to give most times. He said, be ye holy for I am holy. Yeah. Stop concocting strange fires. Amen. All right, sir. Forgive me. That's all the right. conviction is on this side of the pulpit as well. And that's what he's been doing. He was like, I require something deeper from my people in order for me to lead my people out of the wilderness into the promised land. All right. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 14 through 18. It says, for he himself is our peace who has made the two groups, one and he, one, and he has destroyed the barrier of dividing wall of hostility by setting aside in his flesh the law. It is its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself the one humanity out of the two, thus making peace in one body and to reconcile both, to both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death the hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. Yes. For through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Amen. Worship him in spirit and truth. Yes. Stop right. making strange fires. It's suddenly a privilege of every child of God to walk so closely with him and maintain such a divine community with him as not to feel a necessity to go into the world to find your enjoyment or satisfaction. He is your all sufficiency. Jesus in the gospel is more than enough. You don't have to feed yourself everything that the world and Satan is selling. Because what he is is a con man. He was a liar from the beginning. And everything he sells is a counterfeit. Jesus is the genuine article. So I suggest everyone goes home today and search their hearts and take a real look at self and look at the man in the mirror and ask him, what can I do to do better for you? Because it's never been all about you. It's always been all about him. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Mm. In Psalms, 27 and 4. One thing I have asked from the Lord that I shall seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate in his temple. That's one thing I've required of the Lord, that I can be able to sit at your feet, Master, and not feel that I'm such a dirty rat. Because see, what he did is took condemnation away from you when you really worshiping him in spirit and truth. When you have heard it, you can't get the fullness of his love or what God's trying to give to you. He doesn't pull his hand back from you. He extends his hand. It's up to you to extend your hand to his so he can bring you into the fold. Ah, come on, sheep. He wants his the shepherd wants his children. All right. In Leviticus 10 and 3, he tells what, what, what will happen if you don't do what's required. 
He tells you, he said, uh, Baron, uh, 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 Aaron's sons, Nadad Nad Nad and Abihu, took their senses, put a fire to them, and added added incense, and they offered an unauth un unauthorized fire before God, and they, on the contrary to His command, so they were consumed by the fire in His presence. Mm. What it was in in, in, in in the temple, God had made an altar that had a continuous fire that was Him. He was the like the burning bush. He was the living fire. So he didn't need their censers or their incense to light his fire. But see, in, in, in the text, if you read through it yourselves, because we for the sake of time, it talks about about withstanding from drinking or, or whatever. So it, the, the the commentary doesn't doesn't give you a a, 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 a concise or a clear answer of what. Nadab and, and, and Abihu had really done, but they had been absent from the presence of God. So they ran in and they said, we're going to do a quick fix with God. So so, so Sunday mornings, don't come in with this half cocked attitude that I'm going to worship according to how I feel. Because it ain't about your feelings. He requires something deeper than that because he is God and he is God alone. You have to understand how holy he really is. That's how holy God is. Yes, sir. He said, you come in with these matches trying to light a fire that's a consuming fire. So because of your disobedience, you will be struck down where you stand. Mm. See, God is truthful about everything that he does. Yeah. He gave all the specifications on which how to serve him, how to do it how it would work out for you, but they chose not to listen to God, and they did it according to their own mindset. Which human beings, we will jam ourselves up every time trying to do stuff in our own strength. Mm. You don't know what you're doing. Right. Right. <laughs> you have to ask for instructions from the Holy One. That's why the Holy Spirit was imputed in man to lead you and guide you into all truth. You don't even know what truth is unless the Holy Spirit leads you there. Amen? Amen. Nadab and Abihu, along with Aaron, were sanctified. Pastor Webb has been speaking on that for the last couple of months, consecration. Amen. Being sanctified, which means being set apart. I look different than the world. When you're in your job place, when you're in your, your uh, 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 homes, when you're in the grocery store, you should have an aroma of God. You should look different. You should speak different. You should be set apart. You should be consecrated. Now, if I smell of the stench of the world, how is the testimony of Jesus Christ from his witnesses yes. supposed to be believed. Right. What you have done is put the Savior back on trial oh. and had him crucified again. Right. By your actions. Yes. He said that we would be ambassadors of the earth. So ambassador means representative of Christ. Yes. If I represent him with my life and my life is torn from the floor, how am I representing God? Thank you, Lord, for the whooping. Thank you for the whooping. God is sanctified in our hearts. When we fear and have reverence for him, God sanctifies our lives when we live and reflect his holiness. God clearly prescribed who should serve and act in a manner that's pleasing for him in worship. Yes. In Exodus 30 verses 7 through 10 it reads God had an appointed order of service in the Old Testament. And in Exodus 30 and Verses 7 through 10. It says that 
Aaron must burn fragrant incense on the altar every morning when he tends the lamps. He must burn incense again when the lights of the lamps at twilight. So the incense will burn regularly before the Lord for the generations to come. See, see, you, see your life is a lineage, priest, priestess, to lead in a certain way that those that come behind you will have the same priesthood that you have. To continue in that in that way of living. And he says, do not offer on this altar any other incense or any, any burnt offerings or grain offerings. And do not pour drink offerings on it. Once a year, Aaron shall make the atonement on its horns. So once a year, there's a sacrifice to God. But this is the thing. It's going to cost you something. Because sacrifice is built in blood. So when you think you have doing it, there's going to be some cutting away of the flesh in order for you to worship him in spirit and truth. you got to cut away the fat of the land. you got to cut away that because an all-consuming fire will bring you into the holiness of God. You got to burn away, like big companies say, trim the fat. Yes. We got to get lean with God. Amen. We got to have a different attitude, a different mindset. Amen. In Peter 1 and 15, it says, But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. When you talk, let it show the goodness of God. When you speak to people, let them see God in you. Right. See, see, this is not cliche. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. This is a true thing. You have the living God living in you. The Holy Spirit was imputed to man, which means he was fused into your DNA. He resonates inside you. So if you live like all hell, you grieve the Spirit. Make the conditions conducive for uh, the Holy One that lives in you. Amen. Make it nice. Clean up your house. It raises your property value. <laughs> the presumption of Nadab and Behu in Leviticus 1 and 2. See, they just thought that they could do a strange fire uh, or something foreign, something adulterous, something unauthorized. I just want to. How many times do we live our lives and say, just because I want to? I had an incident recently, and I was angry about something that was going on with the workplace and all that. And my wife asked me, being a good rib, why are you? mad. And my response was, I'm mad because I want to be mad. That's an unauthorized fight. Who told you you got the right just to be mad because you want to be mad? He said, this is the day that I have made so rejoice and be glad. That's what the word says. God has prescribed the who, the what, the when, the where, and the how. Huh. And sometimes why? <laughs> These two said that it was no big deal that they was going to do church the way that they wanted to do. They, 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 they had the style of old blue eyes. I did it my way. So, so, so next time you feel like doing it your way, think twice. Think twice because it ain't your way. It's his way. <laughs> they knew what God has said, what the Lord required and wanted, and they disobeyed. Yes. And they and, and did what they wanted to do. It is dangerous. 
it's a dangerous thing when we know what the scriptures say mm -hmm. and what the Lord wants and requires. And we choose to be presumptuous yeah. and go ahead and do our own thing because it's what we want to do. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. There is a problem with that. Yeah. Proverbs 14 and 12 says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end way is death. Oh. Mm -hmm. Stop thinking so much and start asking a lot. Amen. What is it what you would have me to do, Lord? I'm mixed up. I don't have, have it right. When we rely on the flesh instead of the Holy Spirit, when we seek to have our own way, when we fail to abstain from conforming to the world, when we go through the motions, we present strange fire. As I close, I'll leave you with this. In Isaiah 29 and 13, it says, Wherefore the Lord says, For as much as my people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips, they do not honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me, and taught by the precepts of man. Strange fire. But praise be to God that on Friday,